Hey there, I'm your host Lesawi, and this is part 12 of the inventory series. In the last video, we covered the start to inventory function, and today we are going to be doing the filter. And with that said, let's begin. Let's start by going into our content drawer, and in the UI folder, we want to create a new widget for our filter. So wb underscore item filter. Now inside of this widget, we want to add a button. And then in here, I want to get a text. So let's do that. And for our button color, I'm going to copy the one I have here and paste it into the background color. And we can also save it. For the text, I'm going to set this to size 13 of font and padding of 5 overall. Let's make a variable txt underscore filter name. And our button should be called button underscore item filter. Let's compile and save. And let's find a folder called item data. Now, this folder we created in the very first, big, uh, very first episode, and we created something called a E underscore item category. Now, inside we have our categories, and we have an option in advanced called bitmask flags. We want this to be turned on. Now, save this. Let's head back into our filter widget, and in the event graph, we can get rid of construct and tick. And on pre-construct, I'll get my text to set text. And I want to promote this in text to a variable. Filter name. And we want this to be instance editable and exposed on spawn. Next, let's go ahead and grab our button on click. So we're going to check, is our filter on? So let's get a variable is on it's a boolean let's get it and we'll do is or not boolean so what we're getting at here is we're going to check is it on and if it is on we're going to turn it off and if it is off we're going to turn it on then we're going to get our button and we're going to do set background color and for background color we'll do select color the condition is, is it on? So if it's on, A, we can grab our original, make it slightly lighter, maybe a little bit more. And if it's off, it's just the original. So that's that. And then I want to create an event dispatcher. We're going, we are going to call it on filter licked. So, and let's call it. At the very end, I want to return is on. And I also want to return our filter flag, which we haven't created yet. So let's go ahead and create our filter flag. Now this is an integer and we're going to scroll down and where you see this bitmask option, we want it to turn true. And the bitmask enum we're going to use is our E underscore item category that we created. Now with that, we want to return this, but first let's make it instance editable and expose and spawn. And we could also do that with our is on, um, or not really, we don't have to. Then here on the event dispatcher on filter clicked, let's add two inputs, one for is on and the second for the filter. And this is once again, a integer. So pass these values in like that. And I believe that's pretty much it here. So let's compile and save and let's go back into our inventory. UI inventory. In here, we want to add our filters. So on the filter um, size box, let's get a horizontal box. And inside this horizontal box, if we type item filter, it shows up, drag it in and make as many copies as you want. Since we have only five categories, 
we need five buttons. Select all of them, do a fill, and here we could do a small padding. So let's do perhaps five or maybe 10 on each side, 10 and 10, and do five on top. And we'll see how that looks. Now for the text, if you click on each one, we see the filter name. So let's call this equipment. And we can select the fertile flag, which is equipment. Click on the second one. Filter name is our food. Then filter flag is food and so on. So just fill these in. Uh, what did we have? We had potions, potions, books, books, um, miscellaneous and miscellaneous. So that's our buttons and we can now go ahead and see if they work. Now, mind you, we also have to add this to our container. So we'll just finish everything off and duplicate our code later. So if I open my inventory, they work, I can click on them and that's fine. Now we just need to implement some actual usability and in here we get nothing. Next, let's go ahead and open up our inventory again. And let's go to the event graph. In here, I want to grab a construct event. And then we want to make an array with all of our buttons. So grab all of your buttons and drag them in. Two, three, and well, let's fifth. And we'll do make array. And let's just add four more pins. Plug them all in. And if we select everything, press Q, it'll even it out for us. And that is good. Then from here, from the array, we'll do a for each loop. And we want to listen to the event dispatcher we made. So on array element, bind event to on filter click. And from this event, we'll create a custom event called on filter updated. And here we want to add and remove our filter flags from each other. So let's go ahead and create a new filter flag uh, filter variable. We'll make it instance editable, expose and spawn, bitmask true. And the bitmask enum is our E underscore item category. Now from here, if you drag and search for something called a bitwise or, we need this and a bitwise or will combine them. So this will combine with that. And if we drag from this filter and we do a bitwise XOR, this will remove it. So this will remove that filter. And we can connect it in here. And since we have both of them, we can do a select int, select integer. And the condition will be, is it on? From here, we can set this to our filter like that. And we can then check for a value to see, is it empty? Because if it's empty and if nothing is there, well, then everything should be displayed on the screen. So we'll do a conversion to a float. And we're going to check, is it equal to zero? Then let's get a branch, connect that in there. And if it is true, let's create a new variable. Um, is fill is filter on, and let's give it a boolean. So we'll set it. We'll do a copy, and if it's true, it'll be off, and if it's false, it's going to be true. And then at the very end, we'll update our inventory using updated inventory. So let's get our update inventory and connect it like so. So that's this part done. And now let's create our filters because before the widget is displayed on the screen, we want to see if we want to include it or not. So give ourselves some space and let's go ahead and create our first 
function do filter empty. In here, we want to know about our item slot. So let's call this our item slot and we'll make this a item slot type. Just like that. We'll do a break and we want to see is our item quantity equal to zero. If it is, we'll get a branch and we're going to do a return node. And let's plug this in there and rename this success. And if it is true, it's going to be true. And if it is false, it's going to be false. And we can make this a pure function. So that's our first filter. And our second filter we're going to do will be filter item. In here, we also want to know about our item slot. So let's add that in. Next, I want to do a break. And from this break on the item ID, we'll do get row, hook that up there and put in our data table. From out row, we'll do a break and we're interested in the category. So you can close everything down except the category. And from this category, we want to convert to integer byte. And what we're doing here is we're converting a byte to a bit ask. From this integer, we'll do to float. And this will allow us to get the power node. And we want this to be the exponent, not the base. The base will put in a value of two, and that's important. We'll leave that there. And from this return value, we'll truncate it back to a integer. And finally, we can do make bitmask. And from here, we'll get our filter and we'll do a bitwise and we're going to take those two values and see is this value equal to our bitmask. If it is, we'll do a return node. Oop, return node. We'll put that in there and we want to see is our filter on and do a branch log that into there like so and this is a condition if this is true we are going to return true or on false we're going to return true and from here i'm going to plug that in there so this is our item filter and we should make this also a pure function so we're making a byte into a bit mask, checking is the filter on and checking if it should be included. So let's exit this, exit that. And before our widget is created from the array element, we're going to drag and let's actually get them in first and drag it in here and drag that in there. And we'll do a or Boolean. So either or value to a branch as the condition. And if it is true, it's going to make it. If it's false, it won't. Now we made a hotbar using our inventory, which is similar. So you can also include uh, these functions in your hotbar if you wish to do so. Now, I personally want to display at all times what I have in my hotbar, so I won't. But if you do, simply add those two um, at the same logic. So copy, paste, this again and just update your hotbar. Let's compile and save that and see do our filters work. Let's go ahead and see if this works. I'll pick up a few mushrooms. And if I press food, food shows up. If I press equipment, food gets hidden, potion gets hidden. What if I pick up a few blocks and we go to miscellaneous, only blocks show up. And if I click food, the food and the miscellaneous show up. So that's working really good. Now let's go ahead and implement the same logic for our container as well, because we don't have any filters. So let's go and do that. Let's go to our UI, get our container display or our container inventory. Let's delete it fully. And we'll have an issue. So let's duplicate our own container. And let's call it container inventory like the previous one was inside let's remove the hotbar we don't want that remove the size box as well 
switch the padding to of the size box inventory to a 120 value and that will fix it next let's also go ahead and fix this issue in the container display go inside and search for your container inventory and drag that in so the same thing like we did before on the opposite side uh, do, do, do. this was a one value this was a 0.5 value minus 60 on the x and size to content and this oh no not size to content we're going to do 710 here and 680 on the y and there we go so let's also go into the event graph this will have an issue now let's compile yeah and this is going to be wrong so let's grab our new container widget is there and let's do refresh inventory now from here i want to connect that in there and the inventory in question will be our container inventory and now if you go ahead compile everything it all should work and we can go ahead and test this so pick up two mushrooms and a cube go in here food food equipment nope 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 and let's do that miscellaneous food so that all works and it also works for us that's all good in the next video we are going to do the inspect button and with that said i hope you enjoyed if you liked the video leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and as always happy developing